Kia ora. Hello. Welcome back to the new year and season three. For our first video this year, we are presenting a contentious topic and hoping to not only educate, but to raise some eyebrows at the same time as to entertain, because this week we're going to be discussing the issue of medieval cotton. I say issue because the existence and use of cotton in medieval Europe is one of those things that has not been accepted by the community at large. Because of the amount of information we want to discuss, we're going to break this up into a few episodes. This episode, we will be discussing in brief the medieval cotton trade and the industry. Ocean will discuss medieval cotton textiles and then we'll discuss the history of cotton in the medieval period. This is all to give the context and provide evidence that not only was cotton traded, woven, worn, and used for domestic and industrial purposes in Europe during the medieval period, but it was and continues to be one of the most important textiles in human history and the shaper of industrial innovation and revolution. As I am not going to make any claims without thoroughly researching and providing references for people to do further reading, I have listed them below. I'm also going to have to say I am leaning heavily on the works of Maureen Fennell Mazui. So, I have my history blazer on, so let's get into it. As with all trade in the medieval period, this actually starts well into the ancient world. So let's look back into the ancient period first to get some understanding of the medieval cotton trade. Cotton is not a new world fibre, although the new world did have distinct species before the arrival of Europeans. In the old world, there was two species of cotton. The primary species of cotton was the Gossipum herbaceum, a small shrub-like plant with a short to medium fibre, which was believed to have its origins in India, which was then spread through Asia, Europe and Africa. This was the preferred cultivar as the fibres from this plant made finer garments and textiles. The other form of old world cotton was the Gossipum arboretum, which resembles a large shrub or tree. This form produced a longer, coarser fibre. This was used to make coarse fabrics Indian weavers used cotton for centuries to weave buckrams, muslims, and chintzes. Indian trade of cotton was shipped alongside much sought after spices and precious gems for centuries. From India, the cotton plant, its cultivation and uses traveled to Southeast Asia, Northern Asia, Turkmenistan, Persia, the Levant, and the Mediterranean, including Italy, Spain, and Africa. There is some evidence that ancient Greeks were utilizing and trading cotton fiber from at least the fourth century, if not earlier. The Greeks under Alexander were aware of the cotton plant, finding it growing during their invasion of Bactria. And Herodotus also writes of cotton in his description of India. He writes, here are trees which grow wild there. The fruit whereof is a wool exceeding in beauty and goodness that of sheep. The natives make their clothes of this tree wool. From the 4th century BCE, there's a description of the cultivation of the cotton plant from India and Arabia written by Theropotus, and that the same plant is being grown on the island of Tylos. However, in the West, cotton is not produced heavily until the Roman Empire. During this period, cotton was grown heavily in Iran, Palestine, and Babylonia. It was mentioned as being grown in North Africa by Pliny as well. The Romans used cotton to weave fine textiles for clothing, as well as heavy canvas for tents and awnings. Raw cotton was also being used for stuffing for pillows and furnishings. After the decline of the Roman Empire, cotton was again traded and cultivated by the Islamic Empire. This was brought back into Europe, into Spain, North Italy and Sicily after the Crusades and the conquest of the Holy Land and the subsequent flow of trade back into Europe 
through the Mediterranean. The Italian city-states soon began to cultivate, trade and manufacture cotton textiles both for domestic use and export. This was in direct imitation of the Islamic cotton manufacturing processes being undertaken in the Tiraz. Look, before we go on, I want to acknowledge that I've skipped massive parts of history and exciting action sequences. But we are here to talk about the trade of cotton in medieval Europe, which is what the title of the video says. Cotton was the textile of choice for centuries. It was the cheaper alternative to wool and silk, both in production and material costs. It also created finer quality fabrics than linens and low quality wools. We'll discuss more on this later. While the importance of the reintroduction of cotton in Europe by the Islamic Empire cannot be ignored, the Crusades were pivotal in shifting of economies and trade power to the Italian city-states. This opened markets to Europe that had been locked out for centuries. With this came raw resources to flood the ports, markets and coffers of traders. By utilising the already established prehistoric trade routes of the so-called Silk Road, Italian merchants established trade empires which controlled the fate of trade and economies of the world for centuries, and it could be argued still do today. And of these, cotton was one of the most important commodities traded. The largest industries for medieval cotton processing and weaving until the 14th century were in northern Italy, which then was surpassed by the textile trade of southern Germany. So significant was the need for cotton, Italian merchants founded colonies and enterprises far from home to buy and farm cotton to supply the looms back in Europe. In 1207, the Emir of Aleppo approved Venetian merchants to set up a colony with warehouses and quarters for merchants within the city. This approved the exports with tariffs of pearls, precious gems and cotton. Arca too was the home of many merchants, with a merchant quarter assigned to merchants from Pisa, Genoa, Marseille and Venice, all eager to buy cotton. In 1201, the Count of C in Armenia granted Genoan and Venetian merchants special status within the kingdom. By 1261, they were granted special privileges to invest in businesses, including cotton plantations. Italian guilds made a distinction between the better grades of Levant cotton and other coarser grades. The two types were never mixed and used for different purposes. Sicilian cotton, though, not of the highest quality, so supplied the largest amount of raw materials to the European cotton trade. It is difficult to know how much raw cotton was bought into Europe per year during the medieval period, as the methods of storage, packing and shipping were inconsistent. However, we do know it was in the thousands of tons. But what was done with all this cotton? The origins of the medieval cotton industry can be traced to northern Italy in the beginnings of the 12th century. A Venetian document mentions the sale of cotton in 1125. In 1168, another document has a consignment of over two tons of cotton being bought from Corinth. A Genese notarial contract mentions the trade of both raw cotton and Italian cotton cloth in the second half of the 12th century and the beginning of the 13th century. The Italian cotton mills processed raw cotton, preferably unseeded into fibre, which was spun into thread. This was a faster process than both wool and flax, as it required fewer steps. This was woven into many different textiles. Some were cotton blends, other pure cotton. Many were used in wall hangings, napery, heavy canvas for tents and sails, bedding such as sheets, ticking for mattresses, and filling for cushions and pillows, as well as cloth for garments such as underwear, veils, hose, and various outerwares. The luster and colour of dyed fabric and cost of cotton was a preferred alternative to linen and coarser wool fabrics for the middle class consumer. Vast amounts of cotton were supplied to the local Italian market. What was not consumed by the local market was traded either as raw cotton, thread, or cloth. 
Italian cotton appears in ports of southern France and Spain in the 13th century, both in Marseille and Barcelona, developing their own local cotton industries, producing coarse fustians and cotton canvas. Italian cottons also begin to appear in the Champagne trade fairs by the end of the 12th century. Cotton does not make its way to England and the Flemish lowlands until the late 13th century. The Flemish textile trade does not appear to be weaving cotton until the 14th century. It is during the 14th century we see a shift away from the Italian cotton industry and a recentering to southern Germany. There are many reasons for this which we will cover in depth in later videos. However, it must be noted that the Swabian trade, instead of producing a pure cotton textile, developed a range of fustians, that being a blend of cotton and linen. These fabrics had many uses, again from napery to garments, heavy canvases for the use of tents and awnings. As the German industry was growing during the 15th and 16th centuries, the northern Italian industry was waning. This, however, did not impact the importation of cotton, which continued to come through Italy until the shifting tides of trade in the east, and with the rise of the Turkish Empire, and the beginnings of importation of New World cotton, this spelt the end of the Mediterranean cotton trade networks. Oh, I didn't see you there. That must mean you must have enjoyed the video. So why don't you like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.